The appetizer this time is prepared by Rick Tremonto in Chicago. It is wild rice risotto, which includes both wild and arborio rice, asparagus, and wild mushrooms. Then for the entree, we go south to Louisville, Kentucky, and Joe Castro at the Brown Hotel. He combines grits, hominy, and country ham with a lamb loin. Dessert is made by Doyle DeForest in New Orleans. He alternates a creamy strawberry Bavarian mixture with fresh strawberries in a small molded cake container. Rick Tremonto has been making culinary waves in Chicago for several years. So has his wife, Gail, a talented pastry chef. At taping time, they were both at Trio in Evanston. They have subsequently opened Brasserie Tea in Northfield. Chef Tremonto presents this first course, wild rice risotto. The chef will use both arborio and wild rice. The method for each is the same. So we're going to saute some onions and some garlic. And we're going to put some arborio rice in here. Arborio is short grain rice, often used in risotto. We're going to coat the arborio with the onions and the garlic and the olive oil. More olive oil is added. We're going to hit it with some chicken stock. Just about enough to cover and let that start to absorb. And we're going to do that three times. We're going to do the same with our wild rice. Wild rice has nothing to do with rice. It's a water-growing grain. The wild rice simmers until all the stock is absorbed. Then both rices are cooled. Before service, the cooked rices are combined with the other ingredients. How about I lay these ingredients down that we're going to use? Blanched asparagus chopped herbs, Parmesan cheese, butter, wild mushrooms. The rices go into boiling chicken stock. It's equal parts blanched wild rice and arborio rice. some chanterelles, some shiitakes, some carmini mushrooms. We're going to add the mushrooms. Blanched asparagus. Some butter. Some of the porcini broth, which is a wild mushroom. Porcini is an Italian mushroom that's usually sold dried. The broth is a result of rehydrating the mushrooms. Parmesan cheese. Some heavy whipped cream. We use whipped cream because it's a lot lighter than just throwing in plain dense cream. It's 
just kind of fold that in. There's a little too much liquid in here, so I'm going to throw in a little bit more wild rice to absorb that. There it is. Okay. Little tomato right at the very end. The risotto is presented in a small saucepan. Shave Parmesan cheese. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Hotel in Louisville has a long history as the unofficial Derby headquarters. It is the official headquarters for Joe Castro, chef at the English Grill. With him, it's a family affair. His wife is a pastry chef, and his brother and brother-in-law are chefs. He now prepares roasted lamb loin. Okay, there's two steps for our recipe, making the grits and the lamb. First, we'll do the grits. We need to start with some brown butter. By browning the butter, it's going to give us that nutty character, also a homey essence to it all. We'll add our shallots. We'll caramelize these. Okay, now that they're nutty and brown, we can go ahead and add our country ham. There's only one country ham from Kentucky. Saute that. We'll add our peppers. Hominy, which is really indigenous to, uh, around Indiana and Kentucky. We'll saute these to let, allow the flavors to lend one eat to another. Then we'll deglaze with some chicken stock. Okay, we've come to a boil. Now we'll turn it down to a simmer. And we're gonna slowly add our grits. Grits is a two to one ratio, very similar to rice. Okay, we're gonna continue to stir these until they become nice and creamy. While that's cooking, we'll go ahead and chop our thyme. Again, we're using the herb at the very, very end because it does have that life force. Okay, wait until your grits are getting close. It's like polenta or making shoe. They'll start pulling away from the edge. Once 
we've reached that point, we'll go ahead and add our thyme to let it bloom. Some fresh green onions. And we'll finish it with a little whole butter. Just stir that in. Meanwhile, the lamb loin is seasoned before being seared in a hot pan. like to sear it in olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Lay the lamb away from you. You can see we're using the loin. By using the loin, we'll be able to cook it completely to your desired temp in the actual pan itself. So we'll turn it. What we're trying to do is give the meats a nice caramelization, give it a little sweetness. The lamb is cooked entirely on top of the stove until medium rare. We remove our lamb, let it rest. We're going to go ahead and cook our sugar snap peas, 50%, and our baby corn. real quick. Set them with the lamb. At this point, if there's any caramelization left in the pan, once we brought it off with the peas and the corn, we're going to deglaze it with some lamb stock. We're going to let this simmer down until it coats the spoon. Now that this coats a spoon, we'll return our peas and corn to the jus. Add our tomatoes. And finish the sauce with some whole butter. Okay, to dress up our grits a little bit, we're going to quenelle them into the center of the plate. Our sauce is going to act as an active garnish, really. Again, we don't like to torture the food too much. We're going to put that right in the center. Again, the sauce belongs on top of the meat. Just garnish with a little sauce around the rim of the plate. When Doyle DeForest grew up in northern Louisiana, his grandfather owned a bakery, so it was not surprising that he drifted into a culinary career, specifically pastry. Early on, he worked under Kevin Graham and Shane Garange at the Stella Windsor Court Hotel. Here is his strawberry Bavarian jaconde. Start off by mixing my eggs, combining all together, almond flour,
and sugar. Mix it on medium high for about five minutes or until it's light, fluffy, and light in color. Beaten egg whites are folded in. And gently fold in the meringue into your almond flour, sugar, and egg mix. You want to add your butter next. Fold in your butter. And then you want to incorporate your flour. After the batter is incorporated, a small amount is reserved and cocoa powder is added. One ounce, of roughly one ounce of your mix, you want to add about a quarter cup of cocoa. Combine the two together. You create a paste. The paste is piped onto a silicone pad. Then you want to create your, your own design by just freestyle over the sill pad. This goes into the freezer to set up. Now we're going to take we're going to take the mix and spread the mix over the top, the plain mix that was left over the reserve. Thin layer, straight over the top. Bake at 375 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. Now the chef starts the strawberry Bavarian by whipping two egg yolks and two ounces of sugar. Until light in, light in color and a ribbon consistency. Then hot milk containing a scraped vanilla bean is tempered into the mixture. You want to slowly start adding your milk to your yolk mix. Once your mixture is incorporated together, you pour it back into the pot. Return it to the stove until, until thick about five minutes at a medium to low heat. After the mixture has thickened, it's strained over an ice bath, cooled slightly, then gelatin leaves are added. You wanna cool it down, but not too much, because you are gonna add your gelatin. Gelatin has been soaked in cold water. Then you slowly dissolve the gelatin into the mix. After the gelatin is thoroughly combined, set aside and let the mixture come to room temperature. In the final product, strawberry jam is used not only as flavoring, but color as well. Okay, once your gelatin, you see your gelatin is starting to set, then you want to take your jam and incorporate your jam into your mix. Then you want to take your cream and then fold it into the, the Bavarian cream.
Meanwhile, the sponge cake goes into a mold. I've cut some strips out. The strip will go around like so. Then I'll take my pastry bag. Basically what you want to do is you want to take this, put a small amount of cream, some fresh sliced strawberries, more cream, layer it, strawberries, finish it off with cream. A cake disc is put on top and it is refrigerated. The dessert is presented with chocolate coated acetate leaves. Then you want to take your dessert and place it right in the middle. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to peel off all the acetate. Sliced strawberries garnish. Garnish it with a nice sprig of mint. 